river run, run through the hills, run river run to the sea, run river run to your place beneath the sun, run river run over me, run through the land, you run through my soul, bring me wisdom and peace, run through all he Welcome to Beam Guest today. This is Jan Lewis, and we have from Sudbury, we have a local author. His name is Steve Ulfelder. Steve, welcome. Hello, Jan. And Thanks Steve for has me on. four books. Now, four. He had sent me three. He has actually four. If it's not a trilogy, what makes the fourth one? Uh, series? Quite, let's call it a series. Oh, the actually. series. First one Purgatory Chasm. A lot of people are living out here, Sutton. Purgatory Chasm. That's the first one. The second one, The Whole Lie. How about that? The next one, Shotgun Lullaby. This guy's been busy. Wolverine Brothers Freight and Storage. Now, this is a lot to talk about. I want to make sure I've got this all right here. All right. Okay. What made you start writing? When did you start? Well, I have wanted to be a professional author since I was eight years old, basically, since I read my first Hardy Boys book. It was as simple as that for me. And not only did I want to be an author, I wanted to write not just mysteries, but a mystery series. Yeah. The Hardy Boys books, as they do for so many mm -hmm. young boys especially, uh, just made me want to do that. Yeah. And it was the only thing I ever wanted to do. I was an English major in college, and I had a journalism, series of journalism jobs, but all the time there was this idea in my head that what I really want to be doing is writing a, ser a mystery series. Did your teachers pick up on this? I My teachers told me I had a little talent for writing, and yeah. it seemed to be the only thing I had any talent for. Did you illustrate them too? No, 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 no I have no talent. For, I cannot, cannot draw a straight line. Yeah. All I can do is write when I'm lucky. <laughs> So you, you, what college did you go to? Ohio Wesleyan Ohio. University, out in, uh, this, out in central Ohio. And yet you were from New England. Yeah, that's correct. I, well, why I, did you go out to Ohio? You know, I wish I could remember, but it seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. I chose a college. There were three I applied to. Uh, I chose the furthest away, which I should not have done. I was so homesick, and it, but it just looked so Ivy League. I thought it was so cool, and I got there and found out how uncool it is to be homesick. I was out of my, I knew nobody there. I think being far away from home was an important part of it for me too. You liked it. Because I grew it. up in Massachusetts. You wanted to be far away. Yes, I did. I fell in love with the demeanor, not because of the distance, uh -huh. which caught up with me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, no, I, so you married, majored in English? Yes. English. And with a creative writing uh, yeah. made, uh, concentration, I suppose. And then I started uh, working in computer journalism. Why? Because that was the first job I got. Yeah. That was the first person who answered my resume. And for 20 years almost, I worked for a series of magazines right in the Metro West area. Computer World Magazine, CIO Magazine. He's here or in Ohio? No, right here. Right in, here. Uh, here in, they're all centered in Framingham and uh, Westboro, Southboro, that area. And that was uh, very fulfilling, but I had this nagging idea that I wanted to write the mystery novels. Yeah. Along about... 2006, I said to my then wife, I've got an idea. Why don't I give up this satisfying journalism career, yeah. spend half of my time building race cars, and the other half of my time learning to write mystery And novels. her response? Her response was, yeah. <laughs> she said, is there a paycheck in here I somewhere? Know. I said, well, that, I'm an incurable optimist. I said, that will work itself out. Uh -huh. And lo and behold, the race car company, which is right in Menden, yeah. called Flat Out Motorsports, is still going strong. I was just there before I came here. Is that off Route 140? Yes. It's I've right, passed that. It's absolutely right on Route 40 near Bellingham Center, yeah. basically. Um, and I took a, uh, an ex a night class in how to write a novel, because even though I was an English major in college, there was an awful lot I didn't know about how to write an entire novel. And I wrote a mystery novel, and lo and behold, that novel was not quite good enough to get published, 
but it was good enough to land me a literary agent. Mm. And she has been in my corner ever since. This is, now we're in the year 2007. Yeah. And uh, so I wrote this mystery novel with this character that I'll explain in a moment. Yeah. And the book didn't get published. And I'm a little bit stubborn, so I said, should I write a book with the same character? But didn't you want to self-publish? A lot of authors are doing that. That is very popular these days. Yeah. In Back then, very few authors were doing it, mm. and I did not want to go that route. I wanted to try to see if I could get a traditional publisher. I wrote a second novel with the exact same lead character and all this yeah. supporting characters, and that one did not get published either. But what was happening was I was getting a little bit better, better at writing better. these Your momentum was as coming. I went along. Yeah. Because writing novels, like it, as with anything else, you simply get better at it as you do it. I wrote a third novel with the same character, which people, people thought I was crazy for doing that. They said, maybe this character isn't working, right. maybe you should try something else. I said, no, I believe in this character and this sort of this setup that mm. I've got going and I'm going to try it again one more time. And I wrote that novel, my agent read it overnight, and she called me the next morning and said, I'm going to sell this novel. You finally... She got it. Was it one of these? It was Purgatory Chasm. Okay, Kazem. so Purgatory Chasm. This was the first one that made the hit parade. That is the first uh, Conway Sachs novel that was published, although in my mind it will always feel like the third Conway Sachs novel. Okay, can you briefly tell us what it, we're going to go through each book, what it was sure. about? That book, okay, I should start out by telling you a little bit about Conway Sachs, okay. the character, yep. and what these books hinge on. I think what, what you might call the hook of mm -hmm. the series. Conway Sachs, the two things you need to know about him are that he's a washed up NASCAR driver who looked like he was going to be a big star but then drank himself out of a job, basically, and that, not coincidentally, he's a recovering alcoholic. And the way the books work is that Conway is part of a very tight-knit AA group that is based right in Framingham. The, these books are set in yeah. Metro West, yeah. and a lot of readers find that very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so he's part of this tight-knit Framingham AA group, and essentially what he does is he solves mysteries for his fellow alcoholic, Alcoholics Anonymous friends. Um, and in that first book, let me think if I can remember. Now, keep in mind that I wrote this a oh, long yes. time ago. Mm. Let's see. I know he has a friend from his AA group who, mm. whose car is being essentially held for ransom yes. by a crooked repair shop. Mm -hmm. And when Conway starts to look into what's going on here, he starts to peel back layers and layers, somebody gets murdered. I won't give away who, but oh, no. somebody that we meet early on gets murdered and Conway makes it his business to solve the case. And now, one thing, you know, one thing a lot of people ask me, and pe some people aren't sure whether I want to talk about this, but I want to tell you this is absolutely fine for me to talk about. The inspiration for all of these books is the fact that I myself am a recovering alcoholic. And I'm not uh, sensitive about that at all. I've got a lot of sobriety, many years. It's probably the best thing I ever did in my life. And in fact, the inspiration for these books occurred, oh, about 15 years ago, when I attended an AA meeting somewhere right in this area. So I'm, I'm not kidding when I tell you it was within 10 miles of mm. where we're sitting right now. I mm. won't say more than that. And the meeting had this incredible joy and vibrancy and energy. And not all AA meetings have that. They're mm. all different. But this one was so, so boisterous and, and full of happiness, and I said, wow, I've never been to a meeting like this before. I wonder if you could write a series of mysteries about an AA group and, and solve various cases that sprang out of these characters' wow. uh, if, lives. And lo and behold, it seems to be working out pretty well. Well, look at the New York Times best-selling author. The New York Times says, Genuine Characters and Intense Action, a serious crime novel with serious edge by Patrick Lee at the New York Times, best-selling author. That's pretty good. Well, thank you very That's much. That's really good. That Purgatory Chasm, I was very fortunate. It got me off to a great start because it was nominated for an Edgar Award, which is 
yeah. the biggest award uh, in the mystery community, yeah. and uh, and I was very gratified by that. Now, do you ever get over to um, Tatnuck or Barnes and Noble and and sit there and? Absolutely. All right. Tatnuck in Westboro is uh, one of my favorite places in Me the too. world. <laughs> it's a great bookstore, and I held a lot of events there. And there is indeed, there's a Barnes & Noble at the Blackstone Valley Shops. Yes, there is. And that is so close to Purgatory Chasm itself. Yes. And so I've done lots of events there, and I sell lots and lots of Purgatory Chasms there. Oh, you know yeah, but that. for people watching out of state, out of the country, Purgatory Chasm is uh, a kind of a special place in Sutton, Massachusetts, not far from here. And, um, you know, on the sad part, we've had some deaths of people falling from the huge rocks right down and it's it's is it tunnel like a tunnel I have I haven't gotten the guts to go into it but is it oh like boy how would I describe purgatory chasm it's it's an actual state park and again many people don't realize that even people uh, east of 128 often don't realize that they've never heard of it but purgatory chasm state reservation as you say it's in Sutton and it's essentially it's a millions and millions of years old and it's sort of a, a giant rock slide almost in a way uh, with all sorts of ravines and cliffs and, and dangerous slopes and that sort of thing. And isn't there like a like a chasm cave you can go into or I something? I believe there is. Uh, I won't be going there in. There are all <laughs> sorts of trails, some of them oh. more accessible than yeah. others. Yeah. But as you say, every year it seems one or two unfortunate hikers. Yes. We have a cave here in Upton. Did you know that? I did not know yeah, that. Yeah, in our historical society we have a cave, a very mysterious, we're not sure, I don't know if anybody's exactly positive what it is, but it's for real. Uh -huh. it's an, ooh, okay. Now, next book, The Whole Lie. Now, this one, uh, Edgar, finalist author, you got the Edgar, finalist author of Purgatory Chasm. This was next in line. What was this one basically about? In that book, the second in the series, Conway again is finds himself rescuing a fellow member of his AA group. And she, her name is Savannah Kane, and essentially she disappeared from the scene many years ago, and she was a former lover of Conway's, yeah, which is important because Conway now has a very strong relationship with his live-in girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And Savannah comes back to Framingham and announces that a man who is running for governor of Massachusetts is her baby daddy, to, yeah. you know, to put it uh, bluntly. And... Uh, Again, once again, unsurprisingly, somebody gets murdered and Conway has to unravel that case. Now, this was written, this was, when was this written? You that remember? one was written, I'm going to say 2009. That one would have been written in about 2010 or maybe 11. It came out in uh, 2012. Oh yeah, 2012, yeah, yeah. 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 Did you choose the covers, or did your your agents? The uh, the publisher chooses the covers. Yeah. I get a little bit of input, but not a lot. But I've always been very pleased at the covers. I loved the Purgatory books. Chasm one. That one to me, good. that really, oh god, it's I, moody, isn't it? It's got yeah. the, it's got the right mood. That's very Definitely. evocative. It's it's. Yeah. You know, it's uh, out here in this part of New England, it's a lot of forest. Yes. And it's like you're going down this dark road, and I've seen, like, the sunset coming on the end. This one, you know what this one always reminds me of? This feels like driving uh, west on Route 2 into the sun, into the darkness. Yeah. Do you, does that ring a bell? You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, the way up there. Yeah. Isn't that it goes up in the Lemonster area? Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, so we got the whole lie. Which, and by the way, the whole lie. Most of the books are set right in Metro West. The whole lie. I dipped into Boston a little more. Yeah, yeah. The whole lie of all my books has. It's got some Beacon Hill and some Cambridge, and it's a little bit more Bostonian. But uh, at the time that I wrote these books, you know, the great Spencer novels yeah. by the late Robert Parker. He was, is my favorite of author course. of all time. And he was he was Boston. I mean, he uh. he. The way he talked. He yes, was, no, yes. maybe. <laughs> so I decided to set my books in a slightly different area, and I thought that worked out pretty well because yeah. I think uh, Metro West has a lot to offer, mm -hmm. and there's a lot more uh, contrast and uh, opportunity for confrontations than, than many people yeah. realize. All right, now, Shotgun Lullaby. This almost... I didn't get to read this one. This one, what, tell us about this one. Well, we get to the third book, Shotgun Lullaby, and in that book, uh, Conway has adopted sort of as a uh, as a 
a virtual son, a young, recovering cocaine addict who reminds him of his own son and has really taken this kid under his wing and is trying to, the kid is on the straight and narrow and Conway's trying to help him out and the, the kid gets murdered, of yeah. course. Okay. And he is the son of a very wealthy uh, investment banker from, I believe, from somewhere in the area. Uh, it's not ringing a bell right now. I do forget the details of yeah. my own books. Yeah. And so we, you know, we have plenty of suspects. We have a father and a stepmother and many enemies and drug dealers and oh, yeah. uh, uh, organized criminals out in the Springfield and Chicopee area. Brazilian American state cop. Yep. Yes. Wonderful Brazilian American state cop. You know, Hank Philippi Ryan, for those of you who live here in New England, you know, she's on, on television. She made the statement right on the cover. Gritty, intense, completely original. How about that? That was lovely of Hank to do. Hank's a friend, and she is a fantastic writer herself. As as she's got a shelf yeah, full she, of Emmys. She's got a room full of Emmys. Yeah. Uh, she's an incredible writer. She's incredibly generous to all of us in the mystery. Is she a room. mystery writer? Is she? She absolutely okay, is. Okay, I she have not yet written her. She writes fantastic thrillers. Uh, absolutely worth reading. Publishers Weekly gave you the excellent. Readers will want to see more of Ulfelder's tough but vulnerable lead. That's my That's what, how I would describe this. It's got a toughness but human vulnerability to it. Well, thank you. I like to, yeah, I like I to think that Conway's got some heart. Now, Wolverine. Now, this one was probably the most unusual title. Wolverine Brothers Freight and Storage. Where did this come from? Oh, boy. That title comes from the fact that there are two brothers in, deeply involved in this mystery and both of them went to the University of Michigan yeah. and so they call themselves the Wolverine Brothers and they own a uh, store, one of these used store facilities. Yeah. Um, now you know, well, people around here might be very interested in that book because usually I write about actual towns that exist. If, if I'm writing about Framingham, it's Framingham. If I'm writing about Worcester, it's Worcester. But I actually invented yeah. a town, and I called it Briar. Mm -hmm. And Briar is actually, in my mind's eye, it's if you took parts of Upton, mm -hmm. including Upton State Forest, and a little bit of Hopkinton, and the southern part of Westboro, and you sort of mashed all this up together, that is Briar. So it's, it's not overstating it to say that parts mm -hmm. of that book are set right in Upton. And I got I enjoyed writing that town so much that uh, the novel that I just completed, which is not in this series, I stuck with Briar. That's that's my new favorite imaginary town. And this we were just talking about the author. Uh, gosh, I just borrowed a book from the library, Robert Parker. Uh, book list talks about you as this action-packed story moves lightning fast, and Sachs makes an appealingly damaged protagonist. Dennis Lehane and Robert B. Parker fans will enjoy Ulfelder. Well, there you go. Well I can't, said. I can't ask for much higher praise than that. That's and this, this nice also, this cover is also attracts my attention. Again, we're in the dark. Darkness. With the, this is the mystery quality to mm -hmm. me. I love the way those two. Now we have something else, a treat for you. He is in the process of, am I correct, writing a new type of book. What is this? I just wrote a young adult novel something completely outside my series and I'll tell you why I wrote it. In addition to co-owning Flat Out Motorsports, a company that builds race cars, I myself am an amateur sports car racer mm -hmm. and of course that's why my hero in my novels is a uh, former NASCAR guy. Racing. Do you, do you like modifieds or the real deal, the real NASCAR cars? Well, funny you ask that. Well, a lot of people would say modifieds are the real deal. Yeah, I know. No, but I, I get it. Yeah. Uh, Conway actually drove in what was then the Bush series, what is now uh, the Xfinity series, and he would have driven, you know, right right up to the top and been the next big star in uh, in what was then Winston Cup, mm -hmm. uh, if it weren't for his drinking problem. But it's funny you mention that because the young adult novel I just finished recently that is, be, you know, being shown to editors right now mm -hmm. with the hope of a sale, uh, is about modified racing. It is. And it's about modified racing right here in New England and Metro West. 
Again, it's set in this imaginary town of Briar, where there is a, uh, a raceway called uh, Briar International Speedway. Well, like Framingham did. They used to have one, right? Yeah, and Westboro did, and, and many towns around here. But as I say, it's a young adult novel. It's for a teenage audience, and it is about a young man, sort of from the wrong side of the tracks, who has NASCAR dreams, but he doesn't have any money to pursue those dreams. Well, in the course of committing a crime, because he is from the wrong side of the tracks, in the course of trying to steal a racing engine, he comes across uh, these creeps, these absolute jerks who are essentially abusing the racing oh, dogs. Yeah, yeah. And he rescues one of the dogs. Um, and this gets him, this makes his life very, very complicated. And this young man is then trying to prepare for and win the big race, but he's also trying to hang on to his dog and make sure these evil forces don't comp get rid of him or uh, endanger the dog anymore. Um, What's the title of it? The title that I used was Saving Three. Saving Three. Three is actually the name of the dog. The dog is named for Dale Earnhardt Sr., yeah. number three, yeah. and that's where the title Saving Three comes from. And again, we'll see what happens with that novel. It's a pretty dramatic step to yeah. move outside your genre. I'm known as a mystery writer. Now I've written a young adult novel. Completely different market, completely different audience, completely different set of editors. So we'll see what happens with that one. But I'm proud yeah. of that. I book. mean, there's a lot of us. Actually, uh, the Grafton Library has a, I th believe it's called a Young at Heart. Uh -huh. Those of us adults who love uh, Youth fiction, whatever, yeah, 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 yeah no fiction. fiction. And you know, I've read quite a few. I love them. Uh, have you ever read um, Being Henry Being Henry David? I have not read that. It's one. about a young fellow who wakes up, a kid, teenager, wakes up in a train station, doesn't know who he is, finds a copy of uh, Thoreau's book. Huh. He says, "I guess I'll use the name Henry David," and how it. You know, and that's a young adult book, and I fell in love with it. What a terrific story. And the young adult market is so vibrant right mm -hmm. now. I mean, because these kids, they love buying books. Their parents love buying books for them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and the stories themselves are just so outstanding, and the writing is flawless. It's a, you know, The other thing is there's a lot of fantasy way out there, I'm noticing. In, in the in the young adult genre, that I don't go for. Well, at all. That it, I, it, there's something for everybody yeah, out there. Yeah. And in yeah. fact, one of the things you know, my saving three, my young adult novel, is not at all that fantasy no. Dungeons and Dragons stuff. Mm -hmm. And in fact, uh, my character makes fun of that kind of thing sometimes. He talks about zombies and dragons and this and that mm -hmm. because I think I would call mine very gritty, almost. Young adult noir. They're or hard down to boiled. earth. It's down to the earth. same Conway Sachs feeling. Down to earth and, you know, Dunkin' Donuts, you know. Is this going to be, do you think this will be a series? If anybody is willing to pay me to make it a series, I will have to make right, it well, a let's series. Just, let's say this thing takes off. <laughs> well, boy, wouldn't that be something. All right, so you th would you be inspired, like, oh, I'm going to go for this and make this a series? I like this character a lot. His. He's a uh, high school, he's approaching his senior year in high school, and his name is Dustin Crane, and he's a talented race driver, and I would love to build a series around him. And with your background. With the, the racing background. Yeah, right? that's, how long have you had the, the store over in Bellingham? Uh, at least, gosh, you know, you know what, Flat Out Motorsports is 20 years old at this point. Wow. We've been in business for a long time. We support, we build race cars, we sell them, we rent them to people, we transport them all over the country in Canada. And that's been, uh, that's been a very uh, interesting, we won't call it a career, but it's been a very interesting business to be a part of. Were you the CEO, the founder of it? I'm one of the founders, I'm not the CEO. We have a president named Nick Leveroni who runs the whole operation and, right. and I'm just a minion. <laughs> I meet a lot of... Um I would call it our older senior citizens who, uh, um, they their forefathers maybe started a business when they came over, they migrated here. Mm -hmm. And then the family, as the next generations come up, have taken over and continued as a success. Sure. Well, that could happen. We've all got children. All yeah. How all old are your kids? My kids are 20 and 18. I've ah, got 23. One, I've got one who's about to go to Framingham State yep. and one who's at college in Vermont. So. Oh, UVM? Uh, no, actually Champlain, right in Burlington. Okay. I went, do you know where Plymouth State is in New Hampshire? Sure, yep. sure. That's where, that's where I went. Oh. But when you went to college, you, 
you knew what you wanted to do. You had a pretty good idea what you were really I good did, at. I did, because there was only one thing that I was good at. Right. You were going to, are you the yeah. only child in your family? No, I have uh, two sisters and one brother. Were you the older one? I was the middle child, ah, sort of. The mediator. Uh, yes, the mediator. And you did, yeah, but you knew, like, and it's interesting, you had an idea, you knew what you wanted to do. Yeah, it's funny, I, I, it was really the only thing that ever interested me, and I've done lots of other things and, and made my living in various ways, and again, the, the whole journalism thing was very satisfying for a long time, but I always knew that what I ought to be doing was writing mystery novels. Do you do it at night? What's your best time of the day to be doing all this? I am a morning worker. Morning? All, all of my energy is oh. focused in the morning. <laughs> like, what, are we talking 6 a.m.? Well, I tend to get up. You know, often the dog wakes me up at 6, 6.30. Oh. <laughs> uh, and what I like to be doing, ideally, is working by 8 o'clock a.m., and what I, I have a, a word count goal. I tell myself I need to write 1,500 words every day. You're tough on yourself. Which is about six pages. Yeah. People, want to, yeah. people like to translate to that, that to pages. Well, if you want to write a book every year and have time to edit it and rewrite it and work with it, six pages a day is a pretty good pace. And I sit in that chair at 8 a.m. and I don't get out of it until I'm done with my That's it, you work right from home. Yep, I work it. on the sofa at home, and uh, when, when I finish that 1,500 words, I go like this, and I'm just yeah. wiped out creatively for yeah. the day, but then I still do freelance writing and other things to pay the bills, and uh, and so I need I take a little break, have a little lunch, and then I do the real work of the day. We're talking with Steve Ulfelder, and it's been wonderful having you on here. I love, it. I love our local authors. Steve, how can people get a hold of you if they'd like to have your books? Uh, my website is the place to start. I, that's uh, www.ulfelder.com. I spell that U-L-F-E-L-D-E-R.com again. And also, people can find, you know, the books are available everywhere. They're available at Tatnuck, at your local booksellers. Uh, any Barnes & Noble can order them if they don't have them on hand. Yeah. They're at Amazon um, and uh all the other online outlets, mm -hmm. and they're also av available as audiobooks from Audible.com. Really? And I know that's extremely popular with people with long commutes and such. So what? But what is what is it? What's the thing? I the I thing the the, the the little machine you hit it and you keep reading it. What is that? Oh, again? the uh, for the Kindle. Do you do the Kindle? Yes, I I love. Good old-fashioned paper. Books. Yeah, see, that's, that's what I like. I want to smell it, hold it, yeah. everything. <laughs> I do too. I'm with you, but uh, you know. <laughs> More and more people are doing all their reading on Kindles, and I'll tell you what I do like about that. If you, you can do it with the lights turned out yeah. at night in bed. Oh. So if you're married or if you share a bed with somebody, that's mm. a good way that can really sort of, I call it the marriage saver. One person can be reading on the Kindle without keeping a light on and keeping the other one awake. You know, I never even knew that. Uh -huh. I see it there and I avoid it like to play. You know, <laughs> you, you go into Barnes & Noble, oh, look, look what we're selling. I'm like, nope. <laughs> and I go all the way around it. Well, Thank you so much for being on. Now, you, when, is your, when do you think your new one will be done, your book? Well, I am just started writing a brand new book, so that one is a year away. Mm -hmm. And who knows with this young adult novel, that all depends on which wise publisher decides to publish that? Well, one. keep me posted. We'll have you on again. There's a lot of places you can do, you know, presentations. Uh, I think it'd be great to, you know, get yourself really out yes. there a lot. I love speaking at libraries. I love speaking to book groups. I am always happy to do that sort of thing. Steve, thanks for being on the show. What a pleasure. Thank you, Jim. See you next time. Be my guest. Run, river, run, run through the hills, run, river, run to the sea, run, river, run to your place beneath the sun, run, river,